Aston Villa are, historically speaking, one of the more successful clubs in England, with seven league titles to their name, seven FA Cups, five League Cups, and the Champions League, or European Cup as it was known back then. They are one of the few clubs in England who have held that illustrious trophy. They've also won the Community Shield in the past, which, as we all know, is the most important trophy of them all. If that doesn't say big club, I don't know what does. And I think all of that makes them prime for a bit of a return to glory because in the last few years, things haven't been that great. They did get relegated, but then they did also win the playoff uh, final in the championship. They did get a trophy for that, so I suppose that counts as well. They've not been doing very well. Um, Stephen Gerrard took over from Dean Smith uh, last season as they weren't having the best time of things. But actually, you could argue we've not continued to have the best time of things. As the season currently stands as I'm recording this, we've played four games, lost three of them. That's not ideal. Villa haven't won a big trophy since 1996, and that was the League Cup, so it was the lesser of the big trophies as well. For a club that finished second in the first Premier League season, that's won those seven league titles, that's won the Champions League, to me, that's not good enough. So we need to bring some success back to this club, and I know just the man for the job. It's me, obviously. Welcome. So let's go Villa. Hello there and welcome to episode one of Let's Go Villa. I'm Stubo. Thank you for joining me in this video, which is the first video of the series. First video of the series with my club, Aston Villa, with the aim being to get them back to the top of not just the domestic game, but the European game as well. Yes, we are looking to add to that one UEFA Champions League. You can see at the bottom there. We are looking to add to that with at least one more. If that sounds like a bit of a challenge, because it probably is going to be a bit of a challenge, to be honest with you, but it's a challenge we're going to take anyway, because I haven't actually won the Champions League in FN22 yet. So this is probably going to be the last chance, and we're going to give it everything we've got. And if that sounds like fun to you, please do leave a like on the video. And subscribe to the channel for any future FM content on the channel from yours truly. Uh, I am really looking forward to getting underway with this. I've been holding off on this since the game came out. I actually did try and do one of these saves offline um, in my own personal time. I just ended up not having the time for it. So I am interested to get underway and see whether we can do better than a certain Mr. Gerrard. That's the plan. Um, but as you can see, facility-wise, we are pretty well set, except for junior coaching, which just baffles me a little bit because I feel like we are very good at developing young players. Um, unless I've got that skewed a little bit. And I also think that we recruit pretty well as well. I mean, that's not bad in terms of recruitment, to be honest with you, but the junior coaching doesn't look great. So might try and upgrade that at some point. We're not going to be able to do it right now. Because the finances ain't great. Uh, we've only got five million in the bank. We've, yeah, I mean, if we look at the projection, yeah, a lot of it doesn't look good. To be fair, some of it doesn't look too bad. And I feel like if we were to get into Europe fairly quickly, a lot of this would get soft. Obviously, finishing up highly in the Premier League will help that as well. In terms of debts and loans, we do have a lot of debt, but a lot of it is transfer debt. So once that's cleared, we'll be home and dry. I don't know how long it will take for this to clear, but fingers crossed that doesn't affect us too much obviously we have made a lot of transfers at the club in recent times we spent a lot of money so it doesn't surprise me that we have such a precarious financial situation i think our um financial fair play situation isn't the best actually um we're currently projected to make only a loss of 3.85 million which is not that far off of the projected one that you can't make so do need to keep an eye on that a little bit, especially when we're making transfers, if indeed we do make transfers, um, because although I have set the team up, and there's a few tactics I've already set up, which I'll show you in depth in a minute, I clicked on the wrong thing there, I'm not going to lie to you, um, there are a few players I'd like to move on, there are a few positions I'd like to um, bring people in for, but because of that financial situation, and we've only got £6 million in the transfer kitty anyway, I don't really feel comfortable with splashing the cash at this moment in time. But in terms of the squad, here are the players. And we have got some very, very good players at the club. The best player, obviously, is Felipe Coutinho. If you watch Let's Go Palmer, and if you didn't, I'm going to put a link up there so you can have a look at it. Um, we know that this man is very, very good. And we've got him younger, quicker, possibly a bit hungrier in this save. So it's going to be interesting to see what he does for us. I do think he'll be very, very good um, as a creative attacking outlet. I do think he'll do a really good job for us. We've also got Lucas Dignier, who is just a fantastic left-back. I'm, I'm, I was stunned when Everton got him. I'm even more stunned that we then got him as well. But he's a set-piece machine. He's a great fullback. He can do defensive. He can do attacking. Just a great player. He's one of our highest earners as well, which is 
insane. Uh, we've then got Emi Buendia, who is not playing a striker, I assure you. But we've got Emi Buendia, who is just fantastic. I don't know why this keeps resetting. It's really annoying. If anyone knows why this keeps resetting, please let me know. Um... But Emi Wendy is a really, really good player. I think he hasn't quite shown his best in the Villa shirt yet, but I think his best is to come. And I think once he gets flying, he'll be absolutely perfect. John McGinn, in real life, he's our captain. He won't be our captain in this save because I genuinely don't think... Um, I mean, his leadership's eight. Make of that what you will. Uh, but he is a very good player and he'll do a good job for us. Uh, Diego Carlos and Danny Ings, the next two best players. Danny Ings, of course, signed last season. In game, it is still technically this season, but... Eh. Eh. He'll be good for us. He's a good goal scorer. He'll do a job for us. Uh, Diego Carlos as well. A very good signing. Obviously, Newcastle were linked with him quite a bit. And we ended up getting him instead of Newcastle. But 18 strength. Just He's going to be an absolute monster for us at the back. Obviously, injured in real life. So, not going to be able to see a lot of him in the real world. Leon Bailey. Well, one of only a few wingers at the club. And... He and Brendia are going to be fighting over a wing spot. I do think it's going to be interesting to see who wins that battle. But Leon Bailey is very, very quick. He's good on the ball. He's got a good cross on him. He's good at corners. So it's another option, whipping the ball in from set pieces. Uh, just an overall really good player. I'm surprised it's taken this long for him to get to a club outside of Germany. I'm surprised he came to Villa. I thought he would have ended up at a bigger club. And Emi Martinez. Now, if I can find the clip and post it on here, I will do. But I've fallen out with Emi Martinez in FM21. I fell out with him on stream and I ended up just selling him just because he wouldn't accept that he played badly in a game. He was really not very good for us. Right, we are having a chat with some players. First one is Emiliano Martinez. Discipline, issue a warning. I ain't going to find anyone yet. I know it's only the second game of the season, but I am certainly going to let people know how bad they're doing. <laughs> well, sorry. You're set to short passing to the fullbacks, my friends. I know that he's a really good goalkeeper in real life, but in this save, he's done nothing but p me off. I am tempted to go with that option. Nine and a half times out of ten when I use it, the player turns around and says, okay, don't want it to escalate, I understand. The other reason is because if it doesn't do that and he actually turns around and said, yeah, fine, sell me, no problem with selling him in this save. Oh, my word. Pleasure doing business with you, Emiliano. Get out of the club. I'm not interested. And in the end, moved him on. I think we brought in uh, Okan Chikir instead of him, and he was our forever goalkeeper at that point. But, yeah, Martinez we had a few arguments with. Yeah. Hopefully, we don't have a repeat of that because he is a very good goalkeeper, and I think he will be very, very good for us. Um, and then we've got a bunch of other players as well, including some high potential players as well. So, Bubakar Kamara and Jacob Ramsey are both five star potential. Uh, Kamara is a new signing this season. Again, another player I believe Newcastle were linked with. Um, he's yet another player from the French League. We obviously have got very good scouting that works in the French League, but if he grows well, He'll be good for us. He can also play as a centre-back. He can also play a little bit as a central midfielder. I do think we'll be going to be using him as a holding midfielder. And I think he'll do well there. And Jacob Ramsey, obviously, the homegrown talent. Has played a bunch for us already. Uh, Steven Gerrard really liked using him. He came into his own under Gerrard, I would argue. It's one thing I will say um, that came from Gerrard coming in. Um, having said that, I do think he was coming in anyway from Dean Smith. So I think he is going to be a good player for us. He's going to play predominantly as backup to uh, Coutinho. But he is going to get plenty of game time. We do need to get him game time though. He is 20 years old. We do need to get him growing, so I think he's going to be fantastic for us if he reaches that potential. And obviously, we've got players like Buendia, Luis, um, Cameron Archer, another youngster, actually. We'll talk about him quickly, Cameron Archer. I don't know if he's quite at the level he needs to be, but we will probably hold on to him because we have only got two other strikers at the club. So we probably will have to hold on to him as our third choice striker. But it's a very decent squad. There is some fat we could trim. If I sort it by this, we'll see if we can find them. So, I have placed three players on the transfer list already. It's Jed Steer, Al Ghazi, and Morgan Sanson. Reason being, we've already got two very good goalkeepers in uh, Martinez and Olsen. We don't need a third one in Jed Steer. And my Al Ghazi. I'm open to keeping him for a bit, but I do want to move him on at some point. The only problem with moving him on now is that, out and out winger-wise, we've got him, we've got Bailey, we've got Buendia. Buendia is better as an attacking midfielder, in my opinion, but we're not playing with an attacking midfielder, at least not to begin with. So, we do have two wingers. We do also have Coutinho, but I don't really want to use Coutinho out on the wing. I My experience with him has been he's better in a central position, which leaves Al Ghazi as the only other winger. 
the system I've got us playing only uses one winger. You've already had a quick glance at it. I'll show you it properly in a moment. So we wouldn't necessarily need Al Ghazi. Um, and also we do have Ollie Watkins who can double out as a winger. But I don't know. Someone comes in for him. I might be tempted to move him on. So I'll put him on the transfer list. Morgan Sanson, we've got enough central midfielders. He'd be a spare part. And he's underwhelmed as a Villa player, to be honest with you. I don't think he's been that good. I actually think I'd rather have the money. And if we can get up to that value of 12.5 million, I'll be very happy for him, uh, for it as well. And as I already mentioned, Jed Steer, I just want to get him off the books. £20,000 a week, £1.6 million. Pounds. I'll take all of that. That'll be great. Um, in terms of homegrown stuff, if we have a quick look at that, we only have two players on homegrown at club, and they're both under the age limit. So when we do get into Europe, I don't think we'll need to worry too much because they're so young. And then we've got a bunch of players who are trained in nations, so that's not too bad at all. Um, in terms of the tactics, that's not the one I'm looking to use. This is the one I'm looking to use. I'll just quickly shift players around. But this is what I am intending on putting out there as our main tactic. If I can actually get the players into the right positions, it would be helpful. There we go. I'm intending on using this. Um, I do think Digne is going to be a support fullback. That's the only thing. So this is what I'm intending on using. I'm not fully set on all of the roles, but I do think most of them are going to be right. I think actually the only one I would change is probably Mings back to a central defender uh, as a ball-playing defender on defend. But this is what I'm considering. Um, Watkins might end up becoming a deep line forward on attack. I'm not too sure, so he comes a bit deeper. But... Again, with the winger issue, I thought, let's play Ings and Watkins up front. But I do want to play Buendia. And that's the only issue with both Watkins and Ings. Realistically, they're both very good strikers. I want to start both of them. But I don't want to waste Watkins out here. I'd rather him be playing as a forward. So let's try and do this. Let's try and get the pressing forward to try and create space. He's going to try and make room for players to run in with McGinn and Coutinho running in. Digne is going to get up and down this side as well. We've got Buendia as an attacking winger on this side, whipping the ball in. Coutinho filling the space here too. And we've got uh, John McGinn who's going to go up and down. But we've also set him to stay wide. So he is going to come into this area here. So hopefully it will work. If it doesn't, we can always put Watkins out wide and play him as an inside forward. We do also have a 4-2-3-1 if we want to shake things up. And obviously, the positions would be moved around quite a bit uh, to about there. That would be absolutely fine. I think that would work as well. And we do have a diamond. The only reason I don't want to use the diamond is because it will alienate Leon Bailey from the squad completely. Because at the moment, it does work. If we move things around and get players into the positions that we'd have them in... Coutinho as a playmaker, we know from Palmer that that works. McGinn as a box-to-box, -box, he's a natural box-to-box. -box. Kamara in the half-back position, which I've currently got him in, in all the tactics. And then Wendy as a shadow striker, always an attacking midfielder. I'd probably actually have him as an attacking midfielder, to be honest. Um, shadow striker would be for Jacob Ramsey, because his finishing is actually not that bad. And then the two strikers up front. The only issue I've got with this is that we don't have any of the wide boys. Obviously, Wendy plays in the middle, and I do think he plays better in the middle, but... It alienates El Ghazi completely if we sell him. Obviously, that's not a problem. But Leon Bailey, he can play as an attacking midfielder. He can play as a striker. He's much better out wide. And I don't just want to completely alienate him. So this is almost the last resort if we need to resort to it. So I'm intending to go with this one for now. This is the one I think that will be the most effective. But we'll see as it goes forward and we'll see what happens. I am very happy with the squad that we've got. And because of the financial situation, I don't really want to spend loads of money. So I'm going to try and avoid paying a lot of money on instalments, at least to begin with. I am a bit of a fiend for it, I will admit. Oh, Freddie Gilbert, by the way, is on the transfer list, I should point out. Back at right back, I will probably want to keep him. But if we can get something on loan for cheaper than that wage, I actually wouldn't be against moving him on. So that was something I forgot to mention. Um, I am happy with this squad. I am <laughs> relatively happy with this squad. There are areas I would like to improve. But we don't really have the finances this season. So the aim is, let's get through this year. Let's try and achieve what we can. And let's see how much money we've got next season. Uh, the guaranteed um, transfer budget at the moment is about £25 million for next year. So we can do some damage with that. And then we'll just assess the finances when we get there. In terms of the season preview, we're predicted to finish 12th. The board wants us to finish 10th and upwards. They want a top half finish. That's what I want. That's what I'm looking for this season. Top half or bust. If we finish below 10th, I will be gutted. Because I don't think we are anywhere near any of the teams down here. We should be far better than them, in my opinion. Um, in terms of the board objectives, let's actually answer the email that they've sent us. And let's have a look at this. So, if we negotiate it and have a look here. So, what do they want us to do? Play entertaining football. Fine. Okay with that. Don't sign old men. 
fine. I'm okay with that. Play attacking football, that kind of goes with entertaining, so that's okay. Uh, and sign players under the age of 23 for the first team. Now, the good thing is they're all favoured and preferred. If we don't do them, it's not the end of the world. But if we do them and we fail one of our main objectives, it could be enough to keep us in a job. In terms of the five-year plan, that wants us to sign players to sell for a profit. As far as I'm concerned, if we're succeeding... I'm not too worried about that, but if we do bring anyone in and we sell them, we just make sure we sell them for more than we bought them in for. Simple as that. They wants to work within the wage budget as well. I mean, at the moment, I'm definitely looking to do that. And then what they want from us this season, they want us to finish in the top half, as already mentioned. They also want us to finish in the fifth round of the FA Cup at a minimum and the fourth round of the EFL Cup at the minimum. We should be able to do both of those, but it is very dependent on who we draw. If we get like Man United and Liverpool in both of those or Man City will be pretty stuffed. And then next season, they want us to qualify for the Europa League. We can actually change that if we wanted to, but we're not going to. We're going to leave that because I actually think that's possible. I think if we have a good season this year, that's possible this season. And I would love to do that, but if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. And then our contract does expire at the end of next season. So we are looking to earn a new contract within two years. And then they just want us to continue to be a Europa League club. I want to get beyond the Europa League within three or four years, if I'm being completely honest with you. I want to be in the Champions League at that point. But I think we're just going to confirm all of that. Christian, you're a reasonable man. I respect it. Thank you very much. Uh, and then we'll just accept this. So, again, just confirming all of those things. Obviously, if we increase that, we get a bigger transfer budget. But I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to be leaving things as they are. We could ask to not be judged on a Carabao Cup. But I, I, I don't, I, I don't want to push it. I mean, this is the only problem. It will then be... I mean, to be fair, it doesn't actually affect anything. No, we'll leave it there. Because actually, if we could win a Carabao Cup, I wouldn't be against it. Remember, that's the last major trophy that we won. So... That should be fine. That should be okay. Um, I am also going to be upgrading our staff because our staff aren't very good at the moment. As you can see, we are below average in a lot of areas. We're nowhere near the highest average in any of the areas as well. We've got a few positions that are vacant. Um, in the uh, rebuilds, I've been leaving all of this to my backroom staff. I'm going to be taking charge of all this as I usually do for a Let's Go Save. And we're going to see what we can do. I'm also taking charge of training. So I haven't done this bit yet. If, uh, have I done any of the other ones? Yes, I have. So I've already set up my training modules up until the first few weeks of the season. So this is the training that I do. There's a few things I still need to tweak on it. I've just put the templates in. But I am going to be taking charge of training. And we're going to see what we can do. So just to recap. Aim of this save is to win the Champions League. If we don't win it, I'm not necessarily going to say it's a failure of a save. But it is certainly what we're looking to do. I would also like to win as many trophies on the way as possible. If we can do that, that would be great. If we don't, eh, we gave it a good go. But that is the aim, and we're going to see how many seasons it will take for us to do that. Um, if you've watched the West Ham save or the Palmer save, you're going to know exactly what the format of this is going to take. So, with all of that said, I think that's going to do it for this video. Um, we're going to come back uh, for the first game of the season, which is at Villa Park against West Ham, and then we'll also play the Crystal Palace game as well. So, we'll get those two games out of the way, and then we'll jump ahead after that further forward. But that is going to do it for this video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. And again, the day that this video comes out, hopefully episode two should be following not far behind. So make sure you stick around and you watch that. Thank you very much for watching. If you have enjoyed, please do leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel so you never miss any lovely FM content from yours truly. I've been Stubo. You guys have been awesome. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.